Hey guys, I wanted to do something just a tiny bit different today. We're going to be doing some cinematic rises and hits in Cubase. So I'm going to walk you through how I make these effects step by step. This is going to involve a little bit of music production, a little bit of sound design, sampling, bouncing and effects, and a little bit of music theory as well. And yeah, there will be a bit of guitar. So although I'm using Cubase and a few Native Instruments plugins, you will be able to do this in any DAW. Most music production software will be able to do what we're doing today. It's just that I'm using Cubase. So what are hits and risers? So in film and game genres like horror, sci-fi, thrillers, a hit is used to emphasize a point of importance, kind of like a jump scare. If you think about a jump scare in a game, the kind of noises that go along with that, that's the sort of thing that we're talking about. A riser is used usually to build tension towards a hit or sometimes to subvert the expectation that there's about to be a moment of uh, fear, essentially. So a riser can be used to put your audience on the end of a seat and the hit can be used to like actually scare them. Often you'll have a riser followed immediately by a hit, and that's what we're gonna be making today. So my first job is to load up a set of samples that we can use, and I will cut back once I've done that. Fantastic, so let's take a look at some of these samples. So I've got different folders here. The first one we're gonna look at is this red one called Impacts, and these are basically all of our impact sounds, our booms, our hits, whatever you wanna call them. So they sound like this. Yeah, and those are generated. I've got three different ones here. Uh, the second one is. And one of those has a lot of effects on it already. And the last one here is. So that's three different instruments. The first one is the Giant by Native Instruments, which is basically a big old piano that they've hit and it makes all kind of cool noises. We've then got a spring drum from Damage and a percussive dumpster by uh, Heaviosity Damage. So those three are making up the majority of our hits. So the absolute basic thing we need to do is add a buttload of reverb and then reverse the file. And that's gonna work thusly. So all of these MIDI instruments are controlling the same set of instruments which is the giants in contact so we are going to add reverb to this one and that's going to add reverb to all of them so let's go reverb simple reverb uh, full mix perfect we'll put a bit longer on there a bit extra on the high slightly more diffuse and a bit, mm, bit less pre-delay perfect so I'm going to bounce out all three of these. And here we are, we have three separate ones. So I'm going to turn the reverb off of there and unsolo that group. I am going to cut them up. Fantastic. And then I'm going to reverse them. Audio process, reverse, uh, new versions. Right, so... I'm also going to shift these over a bit because we need a little bit more space to work on them. So, right, so my impact for this first one is going to be on the one beat of bar eight. So let's move that there so that happens, so that climax is there. So basically we've got the reverbed versions of our original hits reversed. So that reversed by itself so that sounds like this. And then it suddenly ends. Uh, you may have noticed we didn't really hear anything until this point, so I'm actually gonna do this. Oh. So let's combine that with our impact. Cool. Let's move that over a tiny bit. Fantastic. Uh, let's do the same thing with these guys. 
So we're going to align those so it happens on the beat of 26. Now actually with that one, there's quite a lot of effects coming from this instrument, but I think we don't really need it because we've got it in the start here. It's just a bit boring by that point. Let's have another listen. Cool. I think that's fine. Uh, let's have a listen to the final one. So that's going to happen on the beat of 41. Let's have a listen. It doesn't need to be that long at all. Cool. So that's how you do a reverse of a hit. It's pretty simple. You've just got to select the area with the sounds you want to reverse, put a buttload of reverb on it, export that area, and re-import it. That's called a bouncing. So let's have a little bit more fun with it. Let's create a effects channel, a stereo effects channel. And I'm just going to send everything to that. Yeah, perfect. So in this effects channel, which I've sent all of our tracks to, we've got the Unreal preset of the Roomworks plugin. So what that does is basically make it sound a little bit more like everything is coming from the same place. Fantastic. So that's the very basics of it. What I want to do now, I'm perhaps going to do it with our second two because I think they need something a little more interesting. I'm actually going to change the pitch of them. So I'm going to create a pitch envelope in Cubase. So I'm basically going to go up towards the end and with no time correction. So let's hear what that pitch change has done. Fantastic, and the other one. Perhaps a little more obvious with that one, not sure why. Right, so now that we've done that, let's add a few extra effects in there. So here I've got the bowed cymbal um, instrument by in the in the damage library by Heaviosity being played by Contact. And I've got Patch Up, which comes with Cubase, and that's playing this Heavenly Whispers preset. So the Heavenly Whispers by itself sounds like this. So what I want to do is just add a tiny bit of that in there. So it's very quiet. So altogether, that one sounds like this. It's quiet, but it's definitely in there. And the bowed symbol, again, I think I want to turn the volume down a bit on that one, is going to sound like this. So the bowed symbol is actually starting just before, I'd say, well, it's a beat before, but that doesn't really matter. So it's starting just before the actual impact. So altogether, it sounds like this. It's actually quite loud, so I'm going to reduce it even more. Still quite loud, so I'm going to reduce the volume a little bit more. That's a bit better. So it's in there, but it's just a hint. Right, so we've got a few other things we can add in to our risers. Uh, let's take a look at these auto harp samples to begin with. So the auto harp um, is basically a harp instrument that you play with buttons, and I got a hold of a really old one ages ago. I actually did a uh, sound design video on that, which is on this channel, so you can go and find it, and it's basically me tapping this old auto harp and getting some weird sounds out of it. So some of the weird sounds, for example, are this, which I really like. There's another hit. 
which is great because the thing's so hideously out of tune, it just sounds really evil. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is add the tapping there. Add that one here. So I'm just going to make sure it's at the same point. Fantastic. I think I'm actually going to reverse the tapping. Reverse. Fantastic. Ah, oh, that sounds creepy. Cool. So let's put that in there. And then the last twang is going to happen in here. So I'm going to reduce the volume on all of those because I think they're going to be quite loud. So let's hear it with everything else. Fantastic. So that goes on quite a bit, doesn't it? So let's fade it out. And the one with the tapping. Oh yeah, the little kind of flicky reverse sound is really cool. Fantastic. Ooh, and the last one. Again, let's do another fade there. Great. So that's a really big layered sound, isn't it? Just want to hear this one again. Fantastic. So I've got a few guitar samples. What I'm going to do is copy all of these. That's not what I want. So I've got a few guitar samples. I'm going to copy these and I'm going to get rid of the auto harp things because I think it could run the risk of getting a little bit crowded here. So we've got three uh, different tracks. Um, this one at the end, let's start with, is basically just a pick scrape. So just dragging my pick from the bridge down to the first fret. So this note here should be a C, as should this one. Same sample, I think. Guitar 2, however, has got an F sharp and a C sharp. So when you play an F sharp and a C together, you have a tritone or a diminished fifth. And that sounds like this. Pretty evil. Likewise, a C and a C sharp. Sounds pretty horrendous. So they're a bit much when they're next to each other. So I'm going to shove the C notes to the left and the F sharp and the C sharp to the right. So that's a little, little easier to handle. Right, next step, I'm going to reverse all of these. Reverse, new versions. Oh, it doesn't like that. I've tried to fade them out. Fair enough. So let's get rid of the fades there. So, let's make sure these end at the same point, which is there, and which is there. Let's fade off just in case. So, obviously, we've got quite a lot of fade in here. Well, we've got a lot. So obviously we've got a bit more fade in here than we do here, so I'm going to cut these short and fade them in like that. Now obviously that's proper loud, so I'm going to reduce these by about 8 and a bit. Let's try this. Still a bit loud, I kind of want them to be subtler than that. Let's try minus 15 or so, they're still a bit loud. That works well. And let's do the same with these. So they're going to impact there. Fade there. Cut them shorter. And fade there. So they sound like this. Now I reckon actually they could have a little more work, so I'm going to the first two, 
actually these two, I'm going to pitch shift three semitones. Here we go. One and two. And these ones, I'm going to pitch shift, but I'm going to adjust them a bit so they don't quite get there at the same time. Let's try that. Now, obviously, we've screwed with the wave file a bit, so let's just make sure they impact at the right place. Yep, there. And here. Fantastic. So this new one, this first one now sounds like this. Cool. And this second one sounds like this. Cool. So the pick scrape, let's try something new. So I don't necessarily need all of this because it goes on quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is try and add a filter effect to it as well as a volume effect. So it needs to unpack there and it needs to fade in there. So the fade by itself sounds like this. That's going to be way too loud. So let's put it down here. Cool. Let's flatten that a bit. So let's add in filter, dual filter. So we want quite a bit more resonance position about there. So what I'm going to basically do is automate it so this position moves as he goes along. So he needs to start there. Cool. So basically, needs to go all the way down. So let's open up the automation in dual filter position. So automation is in there. I think we want to go from about zero. That's about it. Uh, and I'm actually going to make this a little bit shorter. There we go. So altogether, this sounds like this. Make that a little bit longer, I think. Ooh. Fantastic. Try again. Fantastic. So that, ladies and gents, is very briefly how to do hits and rises in Cubase. So thanks for hanging out. I hope this has been useful to you. If you have any questions about any aspects of what I've done, feel free to leave them in the comments section. That's what it's for. So if you're new to this channel, um, and you definitely should subscribe, most of the content is guitar related, which is why there were guitar samples in this. But I'm also going to do Cubase tutorials here and there, general bits of music tech, Cubase live streams, and uh, gear reviews. But the regular content is usually stuff like guitar gear reviews, uh, music theory, licks, tricks, that kind of thing. So if any of that sounds good to you, you should absolutely subscribe and you should also hit the little bell icon that appears next to the subscribe button because that means you get updates whenever I go live or whenever I release a video, which is weekly, Fridays at 4pm GMT. I think that's all I have to say. You should like the video, you should share it with people, and I will see you next week. Toodaloo.